Morning all. Um, thank you, Bridget. You could not have done that better. All right, because I'm talking environmental assets. So um, I've only got a couple of slides. Most of them are pictures, so we'll go from there. So people that are familiar with fire will know the phrase life, property, environment. It's the, the hierarchy and the rank of how we deal with risks. The region I'm in, which is the Murray-Darling Basin, life and property gets dealt with relatively quickly. Most of our big fires, thankfully, don't threaten a lot of life, don't threaten a lot of property because there's not a lot there. So we go to environment quite quickly. That has some really serious implications because we need to know what's there. So when you've gone to environment quickly, you need to know what's there and you need to be able to communicate that. So that's where I want to talk today. So I, I don't have a lot of data. There's not science. This is about the communication of that, which is really critical and we'll get there together. So the people that are familiar with fire will know that an incident controller, the head honcho at a fire, is in charge of the whole fire. So the big Samson flats and pioneers have whole teams of people, but ultimately it comes to one person. The big fires aren't my concern really because there's a whole team of people. There's lots of help. The ones that concern me are the small ones in really sensitive areas and the, the first initial attack, that first 12 to 24 hours is critical, without a doubt. So we're building a lot of things with the fire management branch around working at big fire scales and implementing teams and lots of those things. My concern is, does the person on the ground in the front seat of the fire truck know the important environmental assets that are there? Because we do. We've worked on them. We've mapped them. We have maps. But if they don't know, we get things like bulldozers go through swamps. We get things like, oh, we didn't realise that was there, and it burns out. And unfortunately, a lot of this really kicked off in 2014 after the loss of Emu Rents. So that's one of the real driving forces. And I apologise, I was under the impression this was three minutes. We might have a little bit longer, so that's all right. We'll get there. So when I say assets, people can visualise a house quite easily. It's an asset, it's a built asset. Life is even easier. But environmental assets are a lot harder. So critical habitat, species, you know, um, things like clean catchments for water, they're the kind of assets that we look at. And in our region, a lot of it is around habitat. So uh, particularly with emu wren, the birds might have survived. They might have moved out of the way, but if they've got nowhere to go back to, predation kicks in and all the other factors. So knowing where the habitat is, knowing its value becomes really, really important. And I've thought a lot about this in that we have a few ecologists in our region and their, their knowledge is great. Like they, they know where this stuff is, but how do we turn knowledge to data, to communicate, to value? That's the section I look at. So if the people that make the decisions know what's important, know where it is, and know who to call, then we've got half a chance of protecting it. Do I just push the button in the middle? Bottom button? Hey, look at that. So. As part of this, I, I went and talked to the people that make these decisions. So the CFS regional commanders, the group officers, all those, those ranked people that make the decisions and said, what do you want? You know, we've got this information. We really want you guys to know about it. In what format would you use? So this is one of the products that we came out with. So bear in mind, this is a wall map this big. So these wall maps sit in stations. They sit in operational places where people look at them. And it looks a little bit complex because it's got a grid system, which is what fireys use. So if they get a call in, there's a fire at whatever grid location, they can look on this map and go, it's here, or oh, there's a big red blob. That's an environmental value. We need to call someone and notify. And if, if that's all they ever do, this project has been wonderfully successful. Because they'll ring the number, someone at our end will answer and go, yep, no worries. And we can look up what it is. You know, is it a threat that could be, or an asset that can be damaged by suppression activities? e.g. mineral breaks or foam? Is it something that we, is really critical and we need to protect? So just that communication point is the really, really critical one. And so we have wall maps, we have digital maps. So some, amazingly, some of the guys, well, amazingly for me because I don't use it, right out in the middle of the valley, they go, no, we need a digital map that's geolocated, I can put it on my <coughs> iPad. No worries, we'll make you one of them. Whatever you're going to use, we will make for you. So then I went out and I communicated this. So there's, there's, sometimes there's been a bit of argy-bargy between um, fire agencies, shall we say. However, when you sit in the room with these guys and say, well, see that dot? That's a really important habitat for this species. And to 2014, Maliemi Renz was fresh in the mind. So it wasn't a hard sell at all. These guys really want to protect this stuff. They just don't know where it is. 
we know where it is, so we need to tell them. So that's where these products come in, and, and they're all rated on the national... I should know this, I really should. So the risk rating based on outcomes, which you touched on just before. So that's, that's one of the products that we created. And the other option is making this data really available. So anyone from the general public can get onto Nature Maps. Has this got a laser pointer on it? Middle? Hey, cool. So this is Nature Maps. You can go into fire, you can go into environmental assessment, and this is our layer. So our region has, thankfully, for years ago, they started mapping it spatially. So instead of just creating a list of important things, it's spatial. Spatial is critical. Fires are fought spatially. Like where is it? Where's it going? What's it going to do? So as soon as you've got that, so that's what these are up here. There's a bit of fire history on this as well. So, you know, here's the Billiat fire, Narcat, it's always on fire. So these ones up here, see all these little blue dots? So they're, you know, some of these ones here are critical habitats for Australia grass wren, Mali fowl, really important species in that landscape that are impacted by fire. So it could be a really important species, but if fire doesn't have a really big impact on it, it's not as relevant. So that, we've got to put onto nature maps. We have a review process that every year we go through and go, well, how's it going? Are they still in the same places? Has there been a fire? Have they been impacted? Review the data, take it back to the people that make those decisions. Those on boots on the ground are really, really critical. So nature maps, publicly available. Um, I will say that the, the actual data of what those polygons are is not publicly available, simply because a lot of it is threatened species and it's known locations, known habitats of threatened species. So we have to tread that fine line of saying, look, here's the information, we really want you to know about it, but we're not going to put it out so a, you know, theoretically a poacher can come in and, and remove species. So that's the fine line we tread. However, more than happy to give that operationally. So they can call and we can say, yep, yeah, okay, we'll get back to you in 10 minutes, I'm hoping, <laughs> and say, this is what it is, it's a habitat asset, we really need to protect it from fire, we really need to protect it from mineral break. So if you're going to put a mineral break in, please don't go through the middle. So then we can start to give really good information back to the operational decision makers. So, and we have a little, do I have another minute? One minute. One minute. So I need to acknowledge I'm funded through a project from the federal government, which is great, and Darcy for his GIS wizardry, because I don't understand GIS. I talk to farmers and Mali guys. But what I will say is this last slide I threw in. So as part of this, I'm going to community general community and saying, well, here's these products we have. We have fire maps. You can look up all the fire history. Touch of a button. We have nature maps. The, the amount of information on that is phenomenal. Open to the public. And this is, this is, I was so happy when I saw that. This is, if anyone knows fire, this is an extract out of Crimson, which is a logging system for fires. And what this basically says is right here, this guy is a regional commander in the region that I work in, rang the department and says, are there any environmental assets we need to be aware of? I think it's eight minutes later, call back, no, nope, you're all good, however, watch out for these parks. If that happens, I'm happy. It's worked. We have people asking for advice. It's front of mind. There were no houses, no lives. Right, we need to protect for the environment. That's our priority now. And hopefully this happens more and more and we can use the model elsewhere. Thank you.